Hi, I'm Stina and as you can see winter has definitely arrived here in the north of Sweden. So what wouldn't fit better than talking about winter camping now when the snow and cold has arrived. Who doesn't want to sleep comfortable in their tent even though it's freezing temperatures? With my 20 years of winter camping experience I would today tell you seven most common mistakes campers do on winter camping and I will also tell you what you should do to feel the most comfortable when sleeping in a tent in winter. So who am I to tell you what to do and not to do? I'm Stina and I live here in Swedish Lapland in, at the Arctic Circle in a small town called Jokkmokk. And together with my partner Matti I run an outdoor company doing tours all year round but our busy season is the winter that extends over six months per year up here in the north. During this time we take people out on dog sledding tours with our huskies and our tours are not ordinary tourist arrangements but rather challenging adventures and expeditions in a quite extreme environment and we do a lot of winter camping. So let's dig in with the first of the seven most common mistakes we see people do when sleeping in a tent in winter. Mistake number one, let's start with the sleeping system and what's underneath you, the sleeping pad. Many campers go out with a sleeping pad that isn't warm enough or suitable for cold temperatures. You must check so you have a sleeping pad that is made for the temperatures you're going out in. It's not going to be a comfortable sleep if you go out with a one or two season mattress and it for example is minus 15 degrees celsius outside even though your mattress looks thick. The ground is cold and the cold would go up through your body if the lay layers underneath you isn't good enough. We ourselves prefer to use these inflatable types of sleeping mats and if you want to complement with a thinner ISO mat, something like this, you can have this either underneath or on top of your inflatable mattress and I think that's make a big difference. Also helps a little bit from condensation on the mattress. Mistake number two, having a too cold sleeping bag. It's a common problem that you overestimate the temperature grading on your sleeping bag. And most people will need a warmer sleeping bag than the temperature rating tells. Sleeping bag ratings usually show three temperature values, comfort, limit and extreme. And for a beginner it's easy to think that the limit temperature is good enough but the limit temperature is just a limit and you wouldn't feel warm in those temps. Our experience is that you should choose a sleeping bag that has a comfort rating that is actually a bit lower than the temperatures you are expecting. Another observation is that women usually feel colder in the nights than men do. There's also other factors that can make you feel cold and it's for example if you are very tired, hungry or wet and in those cases you also need more insulation to feel warm. Also what clothes you're wearing when you're sleeping will play a big part in your comfort. A really good tip to get a um, more comfy sleep if it's really cold is to get a fleece or a merino wool inlet. We use these, these are homemade fleece inlets and they actually raise the temperatures with about 10 degrees in the sleeping bag. So it's a very easy and cheap way to get a good night's sleep. Mistake number three, stepping into the sleeping bag if you're cold and freezing. You should never uh, tuck down in a sleeping bag if you're cold even though it feels like a really good thing at the moment because I know who doesn't want to step into a warm sleeping bag if you're cold. Uh, well you have to remember the sleeping bag doesn't produce warm in itself it's just insulation. You can compare it with uh, for example in 
summertime you have a cold drink and you want to keep the drink cool and what do you do then yeah you put it in an insulation bottle and it's the same with a sleeping bag if you're cold going into it you will just insulate the cold and it would take a much longer time be before you get warm my best tip is to do a little workout before you step in you can jump around or for example go and fetch some firewood for the campfire in the morning or do something active to get your temperatures raising so you're warm before you tuck in for the night another comfy tip is to take your water bottle and boil up some really hot water fill it up in a flask and then put it down in one of your wool socks and lay it in your sleeping bag like a little heater but check carefully so the lid is on so you don't get water all over in your bag that is nice mistake number four wearing wet and sweaty clothes in the sleeping bag it's a really common thing that you go to bed in some of the clothes you've been wearing during the day that are not really dry so always bring a extra pair of long wool underwear that you keep dry all the time to use in the night it's very important that you have dry material closest to your body and if you have that it's actually possible to dry out your other uh, other damp layers uh, in the night you just put it on top of the dry one and then it would dry out during the night i myself uh, wearing many layers of wood clothes uh, in my sleeping bag while winter camping and i like to have them loose fit to get the most warmth as possible to sleep in your outer layer clothes is not a good idea because most outer layer clothes has like a shell material and it doesn't breathe but you can for example take your jacket and put it on top of your sleeping bag like an extra insulation or you could put it under your sleeping bag between the sleeping mat and the sleeping bag to uh, extra insulation from beneath mistake number five not using a hat on your head your body is like a thermos flask and most of the heat goes up out through your head so always bring an extra hat i prefer to use a beanie in the night because they are not bulky and they are slim fit so that's nice and uh, the beanie should always be dry and it's nice if it's soft i think and but uh, the material is very important it's never bring a cotton beanie because cotton always feels cold in uh, freezing temperatures uh, i also sleeping usually sleeping in a wool hoodie and then i put the hoodie up because then the hoodie also protects my neck and give the neck some extra warmth so i think that's nice mistake number six breathing in the sleeping bag how nice doesn't it feel to just tuck down your head and face into the sleeping bag and you can feel the heat from your breath going spreading out in the sleeping bag and it get nice and comfy well that's a really big mistake it will feel warm for the moment but very fast it will be damp and wet in your bag and you will feel cold exhaled air contains a lot of moisture you can see if it's, it's now it's not super cold outside but when you're cold outside and you breathe you can see the air coming out from your mouth and it's moisture uh, you can do an easy test uh, yourself to see if you just take a piece of cloth and uh, put it close to your mouth and breathe for a while and you will see how damp it gets directly. Instead wear a hat as I told you before and I used to take the hat down in my forehead proper like this and I have the hoodie up and then you also strap all the elastic straps in your sleeping bag around your head so if you strap them tight enough you will only have your nose and mouth exposed for the cold air and this will also keep all the warm air in your sleeping bag from sneaking out so yeah 
Last but not least, mistake number seven. Closing all ventilation in your tent. Uh, just as with your breath in the sleeping bag, you will exhale a lot of moisture in your tent. So keep as much ventilation open as possible in the night. We, for example, don't even close the inner tent properly in winter. We only keep it like this. Even though you have all ventilation open in your tent in the night, you will, if it's cold, you will get a layer of condensation and frost inside of your flyer. And for that we use uh, Vetex cloths, you know, the ones you use when you're making dishes and in the morning when you wake up you can easily uh, swipe off the frost from the walls. So this was all from me and I hope you will get a lot of comfortable winter camping experience in the future. And if you have more good tips, don't hesitate to share them in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and give a thumb up to this video uh, if you like more videos like this. And you can also check out our channel and there you will find a lot of videos from our adventures and expeditions. I also want to say a big big thank you to our supporters that support us through Patreon, buy me a coffee or super thanks or in any other way. Um, we spend a lot of time uh, filming and edit these videos and your support give us at least a little payment for all the time we're spending making these videos and we make them outside of our usual working schedule so yeah a big thank you if you like to support us you find links to do so in the description and there will also find links to some of the gear I shown in this video uh, yeah until next time stay safe and take care bye